Hey everybody, this is Lewis Wise, maker and YouTuber, and this is almost every way to cut a 2x4. Despite the name 2x4, a 2x4 is actually 1.5 inches by 3.5 inches. We're going to take these 2x4s and cut them across the grain in as many ways as possible so you can see the process and the end results. To start off, let's do one that requires no tools at all. The caveman method. Definitely the brawn over brains solution. This actually worked better than some of the other stuff we tried. No fine woodworking awards, but technically effective. And truthfully, a lot of fun. Hey, there we go. Okay, okay, so maybe the caveman's not for you. A person and a curb are actually all you need to cut a 2x4. Set up your wood and hop on top to give it a snap. Easy peasy, lumber squeezy. The car. That's right, today we find out if your whip is secretly the 2x4 cutting machine you've always dreamt of. The answer? Maybe it would be with a bigger curb, but in these conditions, no way. Miter saw. Yeah, it's time for a proper tool. Miter saws are frequently used for cutting long, relatively thin stock, so using it to cut a 2x4 is a match made in heaven. This one in particular has a nice, long bed, making it easy to support the wood while cutting. Looking at the cut, we can see it's nice and straight, with very little splintering and a pretty smooth finish. The miter saw is an easy, reliable way to cut a 2x4. Table saw. The table saw is one of the most versatile tools in any wood shop, but it can also be one of the most dangerous. Even using a saw stop like this one, it's important to use a guide or a jig when cross cutting like this. With proper usage though, we get this really nice, clean cut. Very straight, very little splintering, and a nice, smooth finish. Panel saw. It's a big ass saw for cutting big ass wood. It's uniquely suited for plywood sheets, but it also cuts 2x4s like butter. A great choice. Bandsaw. One of my favorite tools in the shop, bandsaws are a good way to make simple cuts in a variety of materials. For a basic cross cut though, it's not necessarily the best choice since with a bandsaw you trade off speed for maneuverability, meaning you could cut a curve if necessary. It's not a perfect way to cut a 2x4, but the results are really good. Clean cut, no splinters, definitely a reliable choice. Scroll saw. I would sooner lick the shop floor than use one of these saws. It's not that they're bad, they do serve a purpose, to cut fine curves in wood. I just find them unpleasant because they're slow and jittery, unlike a bandsaw which is fast and cuts curves just fine for me. With a thick enough blade you can cut a 2x4, but like, at that point, just go use a bandsaw. Drill press. Drills remove material. Saws remove material. Maybe a drill is a way to cut a 2x4. It's a little easier to use a drill press versus a hand drill, but basically, just toss in a thick bit, line up your wood, and start drilling holes in a line. It's a little tricky, but definitely doable. Still, not a great idea. Obviously, you get these big semicircular divots, and I still wound up with splinters on mine. Overall, not a great way to cut a 2x4. Lathe. This is a lathe. The lathe is a magnificent tool used to turn glorious objects out of wood. Using it to cut a 2x4 is a process that the French would refer to as débile, which roughly translates to stupid. Shout out to my dad for cutting this one. Turning something so oblong is not easy stuff. Next, let's try a jigsaw. I did a terrible job of showing it, so here's a picture. A jigsaw is a great way to cut material if you need maneuverability like a bandsaw, but with the advantage of being portable. Not quite as easy to use, but definitely a fair trade-off. The cut is clean, and if I were more careful, it'd be straight, too. Overall, not a bad way to cut a 2x4. Circular saw. Basically just a handheld miter saw, the circular saw is beloved by construction workers and handy dads. It's quick, it's simple, and it does a great job. A classic way to cut a 2x4. Sawzall. It's definitely got that name for a reason. I had never used one before, but it is a thrill. It's usually used for demolition, and it's definitely the sort of tool that'd turn your hand into spaghetti if misused, but it makes a great cut nonetheless. Chainsaw. It's a chainsaw. Mostly for cutting trees, it's not the cleanest cut, but it totally works on lumber. Handsaw. Oh yeah, we're going old school. 
Before young whippersnappers like me had these newfangled electrically powered tools, your grandpa was cutting wood with one of these bad boys. It's been a while since I've used one, but it's definitely not a bad option. I remember learning on one of these as a kid well before my dad let me touch the power tools. It's nothing fancy, but it's perfect for the Amish, and for when you run out of batteries. Coping saw. Do you enjoy cutting jigsaw puzzles by hand? If so, allow me to introduce the coping saw. This immeasurably flimsy blade allows for tight turns in wood, but snaps at the slightest twist. Jokes aside, while not really intended for 2x4s, this coping saw actually did a great job. Recommended. Dozuki Pull Saw. Basically the same tool as a handsaw, and just about as effective. Apparently these cut on the pull stroke rather than when you push, supposedly giving you a straighter, more accurate cut than a typical saw, but honestly they look about the same to me. Hacksaw. Hacksaws have finer teeth, and so they're generally used for metal, but like, it's still a saw. It cuts wood just fine. Wire saw. Possibly the cheapest saw I've ever used at only five bucks from Amazon. This thing actually cuts really well. They're made for wilderness survival, and it definitely has a bit of a Bear Grylls vibe, which like, not my bag, but hey, you do you. It's a crappy cut, but it's definitely effective. Also in the survival category, we have the Leatherman saw. It's just like a big saw, but tiny. Aww. Cuteness aside, it's surprisingly functional. Perfect for camping or for when you're too lazy to get out a real saw. Steak knife. I mean, it kinda looks like a saw. Surely with enough dedication, we can cut a two x four with a steak knife, right? Well, not exactly. Great initial progress is soon thwarted by the knife's blade being thicker than its teeth, causing it to get stuck. If we can't move it, we can't keep cutting. So unfortunately, this one's a bust. Olfa Cutter. I'm sure these have a generic name, but Olfas are the best. Great for cardboard, balsa, or other thin materials. Can this razor cut a 2x4? Unfortunately, no. For the same reason as the steak knife, it gets stuck as soon as you make progress. Major bummer. Bolt cutters. Can they cut a 2x4? Another case of better than I expected, but ultimately, no. Next, hammer. Obviously, we're gonna have to use the pointy end here. Not the best method, but strangely cathartic? You know what? If you really want to do it this way, be my guest. Hatchet. Great for splitting wood, I thought using one of these was a cleaver idea. I was surprised to find that it actually does a terrible job. Hatchets don't remove material like a saw, so cross-cutting with one is quite a chore. While it technically works, I really wouldn't recommend it. The file. Usually used for finishing work, a file is basically like reusable sandpaper. I used some that were flat and some that were round, but all were a terrible choice. It took me nearly an hour and a half to file through this, so while yes, you can do it, why would you? <sighs> okay, Surform Rasp. Basically just a variation on the file. This takes about half as long and it's about twice as fun. Not recommended. Laser. Forget CAD designs. Instead, use this cutting edge machine to do the task of a handsaw. Normally used for cutting intricate patterns in thin wood, by drawing a super boring 4 inch line in your vector software and repeatedly blasting away, you too can cut wood like a 5 year old Jedi with a laser sword. Chop saw. Hardly a saw, this thing is pretty much just one big abrasive wheel. It cuts metal like butter and apparently it also works on wood. It's not really meant for wood though, so definitely use something else if you have the option. Angle Grinder. Usually used for grinding angles, toss a cutoff disc in this mean machine and it becomes a mini chop saw. Again, cutting wood really isn't what it's for, but it works just fine in a pinch. Dremel Tool. Rarely the best option, but always a good one. The Dremel Tool is an essential part of the Hip Young Maker Starter Pack. I thought for sure with the carbide blade I'd be able to cut through, but it just didn't. The blades just aren't big enough to cut all the way through. Shockingly, not a way to cut a 2x4. Multi-tool. This is a multi-tool. It sounds like a barber razor, and it cuts like it too. 
This blade is called a plunge blade, and it's used to cut things flush to the ground when remodeling homes. Not the best choice, but not bad. Turbo plane. Turbo being the key word here. It looks like an angle grinder, but it's for wood, and this thing is a beast. The disc is solid metal, so you can really feel the gyroscopic forces whenever you turn it. Great for shaping wood, but terrible for cutting. It is a horrible way to cut a 2x4. But who cares? This thing is a blast. Belt sander. Using a belt sander to cut wood is like trying to eat soup with a fork. Sure, you can maybe do it, but why would you? Also rip my lungs. Even with a mask on, dust manages to prevail. Anyway, dumb as it may be, it does indeed work. It's just the worst. Fire. Burning removes material, right? So maybe if I burn in a specific spot, I can just cut wood that way. I really expected this to work way better than it did. The problem is that as you burn wood, carbon builds up on the surface and protects the wood beneath it. I did scrape it away as it built up, but it still took almost 30 minutes. In the end, I think it's fair to say that I was the one who got burned. Resistance burning. Here we're trying to burn through wood using high voltage electricity. This baking soda and water mixture helps make the wood conductive. Usually this is just used to make cool patterns in the surface of the wood, but here we're trying to use it to burn all the way through. In theory, it should work. In practice, it just takes way too long to be realistic. I really wanted this one to work, and it technically does. It's just too slow to be practical. Beavers? We've all seen beavers chew through trees before. Of course they can chew through a 2x4. To try this one at home, pretty much just find a good beaver spot. Once you do, just toss your lumber out there and now, it's a waiting game. I think I actually waited too long, because when I came back, it was gone. Looks like the beavers were extra hungry. A few ideas I couldn't try myself, but I found a couple of them online. This first guy managed to cut through a 2x4 with a couple mags of 9mm bullets, and this other guy used a high strength industrial pressure washer. I linked their full videos down below. If you've got ideas for ways that we didn't think of, go ahead and leave those down below. If you like this one, why not get subscribed? Share it with your friends and let me know what else you'd like to see in future videos. Special thanks to anyone who lent me tools or helped me out with this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.